Well, good morning, everyone. This is our worship service for June 12th. Uh, you might notice I'm at a little bit of a different location today. Um, I was diagnosed with COVID last Sunday, so I'm uh, working from home. Uh, and so this will be kind of a, a shortened version of what uh, our, our worship service will be for this coming Sunday. Uh, the 12th is Trinity Sunday. And so on this Sunday, we celebrate how God has revealed himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, today we'll also be looking at the continuation of the Pentecost sermon that Peter is preaching from Acts chapter 2. Uh, so with that we begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus, delivered up according to the definite foreknowledge and plan of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. God raised him up, loosing the pains of death, because it was not possible for him to be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, that I may not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoiced, my flesh also will dwell in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Brothers, I may say to you with confidence about the patriarch David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Being therefore a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants on his throne, David foresaw and spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh see corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The focus of today's sermon text is the lesson from Acts 2. We bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord God, you revealed yourself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we ponder the mysteries of the Trinity today, we pray that you would help us remember what Christ has done for us, that in him God himself was crucified and risen for our sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, like I said, today the church celebrates the season of, of Trinity Sunday, actually the, the day of Trinity Sunday, where we look at the mystery of how God has revealed himself to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, the Christian church historically has confessed three different creeds to talk about how God has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Apostles' Creed, the first of the creeds, uh, was labeled that not because it was written by the Twelve, it wasn't, but it was a concise teaching of what the Twelve spoke and, and taught about Jesus. So this creed is divided into three parts. 
one for the Father, one for the Son, and the third for the Holy Spirit. Uh, a little bit later, the Nicene Creed was written. Uh, based off the Apostles' Creed, it's a little bit longer. Uh, and It's actually named the Nicene Creed because the city of Nicaea is where uh, the folks got together to discuss and to write this creed. And it expands the sections that talk about the work of Jesus and the work of the Holy Spirit. And then on one Sunday a year, Trinity Sunday, today the church actually confesses the Athanasian Creed, uh, the longest of the three creeds by far. Uh, But it talks about the the Catholic faith, and their Catholic not meaning Roman Catholic, but meaning the universal, that's what the word Catholic means, the universal church, the universal faith that all Christians should be able to confess and attest to. So all three of these creeds have helped the church throughout the centuries confess the truths of Scripture, that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet we don't worship three gods, we worship one God in three persons. And so we're going to look at that a little bit as we dive into our text here from Acts chapter 2. We're really getting the second half of Peter's Pentecost sermon that we started last week. Uh, If you remember in Pentecost, the Holy Spirit enabled the disciples to preach and teach in different languages. And our section for last week ended with Peter quoting from Joel chapter 2, that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And we see how that salvation comes about in Christ in today's text. So picking up with uh, verse 22 here. Peter is preaching about Jesus. Uh, And he says that this Jesus has been attested to, um, to the people by God through all the mighty works and wonders and signs that God performed through Christ in their midst. That by working these miracles in Jesus, God is truly showing who Jesus is, that Jesus is who he says he is. If you look at the gospel text for today, it's from John chapter 8. Jesus claims to be the great I am. He uses the divine name to talk about himself. He claims that God is his father and that he, Jesus, existed before Abraham did. He says before Abraham was, I am. He's using that divine name name. And so in the miracles that Jesus does, especially in his death and in his resurrection, that shows that Jesus is speaking the truth. Now in the next verse, we see that Jesus' death and resurrection were a part of God's plan from the very beginning. Even before Adam and Eve fell into sin, God knew that man was going to need a savior. Peter tells us that Jesus was delivered up to the hands of sinful men by the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. It wasn't as if mankind sinned in Adam and Eve and God's like, well, shoot, now what do I do with these pesky humans? Uh, And it wasn't as though Jesus was arrested and God's like, well, shoot, now what do I do? How do I take care of this? No. God allowed his son to suffer and die that he might raise him up on Easter morning to forgive all of our sins. Jesus' death and resurrection has been God's plan from the very beginning. And so Peter reminds the people in Jerusalem that they were the ones who crucified and killed Jesus. By the hands of lawless men. You gotta remember, the events of Jesus' death and resurrection, these aren't things in ancient history for Peter and the guys that are hearing this sermon today. This is stuff that's happened less than two months ago, like about a month and a half ago. And so, Jesus' death and resurrection is something very recent in their history. 
But Peter tells them even Jesus' death can't stop God's plan of salvation. It is that plan of salvation. So Peter says, here's what God did for Jesus. He loosened the pains of death because it was not possible for him, Jesus, to be held by it. Death could not hold on to Jesus. Death, this seemingly unbeatable force, this thing that claims the life of everyone in the end, this unbeatable force is forced to let Jesus go, to let him live again. Death cannot hold Jesus. It's just not strong enough. And so God raises his son up on the third day. And as he has done that, he will raise us up on the last day too. Not based on anything we've done, but based solely on what Jesus has done for us in his death on Good Friday and in his empty tomb on Easter morning. Because Jesus has conquered death and the grave, he has conquered your death. He has conquered your grave. Those things are defeated enemies. We see a little bit later in our text here that Peter then quotes from Psalm 16, uh, quoting the words of King David about what the Christ would do. And as Peter quotes David here, David looks to the future, to his descendant, to Jesus Christ. And he says of that descendant, You will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One see corruption. This psalm is about Jesus. That God would not abandon Christ's soul to death or hell. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that the Holy One, Jesus, would not see corruption. His body would not decay in death because on the third day he would rise to new life. A little bit later in the text, Peter talks about King David saying that David was dead and buried, and his tomb is still with us to this day. But then he contrasts David with Jesus. David's dead and buried, and his body's still in the tomb. Jesus was dead, but he's now alive. His borrowed tomb is empty. That Jesus is a savior better than King David, with all of David's military power and might. David wrote about the resurrection and still awaits that day happening for him. Jesus spoke about the resurrection because he is the resurrection and the life. King David is dead, but Jesus the king still lives. David foresaw Jesus' death and resurrection, and he bore witness about it from afar, from centuries back in the past. But Peter tells them, we are witnesses of these things, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And the job of a witness is to bear witness to what they've seen and experienced. In today's text, they're to bear witnesses to Jesus' death and his resurrection. These are things that are proof that Jesus is divine. He's God in the flesh. And so what does this witness look like? For us it means confessing Jesus as God himself. In Jesus we actually see God himself crucified, killed, and risen for our sake. As Christians, we believe that Jesus is God in the flesh. He's God the Son, the second person of the Trinity. The Father is one person of the Trinity. The Son is another. The Holy Spirit is another. And yet we worship all three persons as one God. So uh, as Christians, you and I can say, at the cross, God died for us when Jesus died on Good Friday. 
as Christians, we can say when Jesus went to hell, that God himself went to hell to proclaim victory over the devil. As Christians, we can say on Easter morning, God was raised up, that the tomb was empty because God's Son was raised from the dead. At the Ascension, we can say that God Himself, in the person of Jesus Christ, was taken bodily back up into heaven, awaiting the last day, when Christ will come again with glory upon the earth. But God's presence among His people didn't stop with Jesus' ascension into heaven. The Holy Spirit arrives ten days later at Pentecost. The text we're still talking about, even though Pentecost was last week. And notice how the Holy Spirit is given in today's text. It says, He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. You have to remember the context of where we're at. What they're seeing and hearing is the 120 disciples preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in the native languages of the people who are assembled there. They are all hearing what Christ has done for them in his death and in his resurrection. Our text for today ends with Peter saying how this Holy Spirit is poured out on us. And he says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. God has made his son Jesus both Lord and Savior, both Lord and Christ. God was crucified and risen for our sake. God ascended into heaven in Christ to prepare a place for us there, and God will come again in glory to take us to be with him in the new creation. So today, as the church celebrates Trinity Sunday, we celebrate what our God has done for us. We celebrate that God has revealed himself to us in his word. We praise God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We praise the God who created us, the God who redeemed us from our sins, and the God who made us holy through his word and power. Thanks be to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and our minds pure in the faith until life everlasting. Amen. Well, as you can tell, my voice is uh, kind of going out here, so uh, we will continue with the Lord's Prayer and the Benediction. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.